Uh, this is a Reichert Foropter. Um, and this is actually one of the auxiliary lenses. I believe either the retinoscopy or plus or minus 50. Um, now, the auxiliary lenses, um, there's 10 lenses and two openings on this wheel. The unusual thing about the auxiliary lens is it's not glued as well as the lens is not glued as well or as sturdily as the rest of the foropter lenses. So typically what I do is I insert a lens. We're looking from the patient side of the foropter, but I insert a lens from the doctor's side of the foropter and basically push against the lens to support it while I bring a Q-tip up to a wet, moist Q-tip with lens cleaner on it uh, from the other side and wipe around the lens. Now, the problem with this is uh, there's so much stray light coming in through the uh, foropter lens, you really can't see what, what you've accomplished, so you basically have to back off and, and take a look at it. Then you have to figure out what's left if it's from the, um, the doctor side of the lens or from the patient side of the lens. So I'm just going to reach through here again with a wet Q-tip and try a little cleaning. This is a fairly awkward process with the filming because what, I've, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this view through the viewer of the camera but the um, fropter for me is, is almost at arm's length and so it's hard to reach and a bit uncoordinated. Usually I have the high plus lens that I'm using to look at the lens and I'm much closer to it. My arms aren't stretched out this much so the cleaning process goes a lot smoother. Um, so you can see at this point it's not that well clean but uh, I've only done a, a wipe from each side. Now this is another wet Q-tip flipping to the other side of the Q-tip. It's dry, trying to dry it off a little bit. And I usually have a fan on in the background uh, to help speed up the evaporation, which I just turned on at this moment. Uh, another dry Q-tip from this side. It's not bad. Now I'm going to put a Q-tip through to hold the lens and then clean again from the uh, patient side of the lens. This lens uh, wheel is the closest to the patient and it's the quickest to get dirty. And then it also happens to be the most fragile. If you wipe the lens without supporting it, it's easy to dislodge the lens. It can end up inside the foropter and then it can jam the foropter and then you can't use it anymore. So this, this is fairly well clean. Now I'm going to flip to, um, there's the occluder, a little bit of dirt on that, and here's a, another lens. This is a, a light from the back. You, you, you want to sort of have indir indirect lighting of, of a light from the side that lights up the lens defect and, and dirt without shining into your eyes directly, and that makes it easier to clean. And this is a fropper that is not really hasn't been cleaned for, for a year. And so I need to do a bit more work, as you can tell on this. Now, the, um, the next lens from the back of the fropter is a plus and minus three diopter sphere uh, wheel. The first lens is a minus three, I guess, here, and then minus six, minus nine, and it goes up to uh, minus 18 and then it flips over the plus side from plus 15 and then drops down to a plus 3. Unless I've got all this backwards, I can't remember which is which. It's probably the plus, I don't know. Anyway, these lenses are, are thicker and more thoroughly glued typically and so it's not necessary to support the lens while cleaning it. Now, to visualize this lens, you can operate the lens lever, or in this case a wheel, so that you can see the top and bottom of the lens, and then by rocking your, 
your body a little bit side to side, you can then visualize the size of the lens so you can pretty get, pretty much get edge to edge visualization uh, when cleaning the lens. This is a fairly tedious process. You know, you can easily, when you when you get a, a good view of what you're doing, and you you can sometimes spend five or ten minutes just on one lens, especially if you get a real dirty one. You clean it over and over again before you you get everything off it. And other times it's it's a breeze. You just uh, zip through it. But it's not unusual for me to take um, four hours for a mildly soiled foropter, and I've had cases where it's taken me upwards of twelve hours to do one foropter, which is 84 to 86 lenses, something like that, uh, by the time you're all done with it. And basically all the lenses you can access from both sides by using a specific sequence. That's just sort of the beginning of the cleaning process. Again, it's inefficient to do this at arm's length. You need to be closer and to do it. The next one is the um, quarter diopter sphere. And um, you basically go four clicks into minus, and then it flips over two lenses, so then you go back off, get back down to the opening. Then you go seven clicks into plus, and it clicks over two lenses, you go back down in the other direction to the opening. And the other lens that you clean is the cylinder lenses. Now these are getting progressively more out of focus uh, on this view here. Right? Maybe I could just set it to manual focus and, uh, and do better off. Um, so then the cylinder lens. Now the cylinder lens, when you clean it, what you can actually do is rotate the lens to visualize the lens more completely. So you can only see three quarters of the lens, but as you're turning it, you end up seeing the side that's not readily visible. So you can't lift the cylinder lens up and down or rock side to side so easily, but you can uh, rotate it during the cleaning process. And it's a su su successive thing, you know, you do a little bit on the, the edge here, and then once you get the, the edge fairly clean, then you do the center, and then you do it from the, the other side of the lens. The uh, final lens is the um, JCC lens, which is actually not focusing here. Um, okay, I'm doing this manually to set the focus. And this one, I actually actually flip the frock around to clean this one. It's, it's too tedious to go through here, so let me just uh, back off a little bit here. Set the focus once more to auto. Now, in cleaning foropter lenses, I usually use a fair amount of magnification over my eyes. I'm about a two and a half diopter myope, and I typically stick on a, anywhere from a two and a half to a three and a quarter over the counter, which makes about a plus six ad that I'm using when I'm looking at foropter lenses for cleaning. And typically, I'm just viewing it monocularly with my dominant eye because there's no real helpfulness in converging in on one of these things all day long. 
you just basically need to monocularly view the lens while cleaning it. Now this is a little bit easier for me to clean now because I'm not quite at arm's length anymore. I'm not flip having to reach around to the front of the propter. So let me just back off here to show you the setup. This was the uh, patient right side of the propter that I was cleaning the lens with. Uh, I've got a, a tissue here between the um, banks to keep the stray light from coming in when viewing it. Uh, I've got a... Um, so I've got a light on the uh, opposite side of the propter to give me indirect lighting of what I'm uh, doing for cleaning. For home use, I've basically constructed this stand, which has uh, which which has a support pole. This is actually a uh, I believe it's a Schwinn bicycle seat post, about a foot long. And I've arranged this lighting thing to be able to slide from side to side, so as to illuminate the um, one lens opening, and then sh slide it over to illuminate the other side. This has a clamp-on lamp. about a 60 watt power and I can disassemble this and transport it if necessary but basically I, I just use it here at home and to keep me from going stir crazy I have a compact TV uh, with either a VCR slot on it or using a DVD player which is on top and I just uh, my eyes and hands are busy while cleaning the fropter and I can listen to stories uh, videos on the uh, TV while I'm doing this to keep from going stir-crazy.